Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I've been getting some comments requesting an RE Cannon deck, so I've built and practiced a list to show you guys. This deck aims to play to its own game plan, proactively recalling units for value, while leveling both Ari and Kennen. The main theme of the deck is to level Ari, then create an elusive chain of attackers and hit multiple times in a row with her for lethals. This deck has a lot of recall mechanics for allies, but also has recalls for enemy units to slow down their strategies. I want to run through my card choices, explain why they're in the deck, and give you the knowledge to pilot the deck yourself. The code for the deck will be in the description below along with the Mobilytics link. Before I get into the deck profile, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. The road to 5,000 subs is over, thank you so much for subscribing and being here. Next is our journey to 10k. This is the only channel where you can get my specific style of content, so you won't regret subbing. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay of someone who's hit Master Tier every season, and even hit Rank 1 in NA a while back. With that, I hope you enjoy this deck profile. Alright, so getting right into it, we can check the numbers. Wow, really aggressive. Our highest cost card is actually 4 cost. So I would say this is like an aggressive combo deck, where uh, it's sort of like a Zero Relia in a way, where we're just trying to play to our own game plan, our own strength, trying to play all the cards that synergize with each other. And there's actually a lot going on in this deck. It's really, really interesting. So let me talk about each card specifically. So we have Dancing Droplet in here. Dancing Droplet's really nice because it's elusive, and when it's recalled, you draw a card. So this has immediate synergy if you play Dancing Droplet on Defense 1. Go into attack 2 with Ari, play Ari, attack, she'll strike, recall Dancing Droplet next to her, he'll go back to your hand, you'll draw one. So it's really nice at cycling through early game resources, getting to more combo pieces and more cards that we need. Next we have our first champion that I want to talk about, Kennen. When I'm summoned, create a Mark of the Storm. So a lot of people have been seeing Kennen uh, in different decks, most notably Kennen Ezreal, which is really, really strong right now. Um, this is like a little bit of a different version. This is uh, not playing around Kennen as our primary win condition, so he's kind of in here just for like more recall synergy. If we need to play around him, we can, but he's actually like completely okay uh, on the back burner. Next we have Otterpus. Otterpus is really sick because he attunes on summon, which basically means gives you a spell mana, which allows you to pull off combos with your spells and stuff while being able to play units efficiently. Um, he also creates a prank. Prank is really, really annoying, so you can hit enemy cards, you can hit their combat tricks like their sharp sights, you can hit their rallies if you're fighting Yordles uh, or Demacia in general. Really, really good. So I want to talk about a quick replacement for Otterpus. If you would rather play the one-drop um, elusive recall, the Mourned, you completely can. From what I've seen, though, like Otterpus juggling is really high value in specific matchups. Um, so if you play like Otterpus on one and then Ari on two, recall Otterpus, play him a whole bunch of times, it gets kind of insane and you can really make your opponent angry with all of the pranks. However, he's not elusive, so he doesn't really satisfy our elusive chain win condition. So you can substitute him for Mourned. I highly recommend trying um, three Otterpus or three Mourned and see which one you like better. I've liked Otterpus, but I'm like a, a toss up between the two. Next, we have Double Recall. Really nice. It just, uh, protecting your units. You can use it proactively if your opponent is out of mana, but you can also use this reactively. Like let's say your unit is about to get pokey sticked or make it rain, whatever. You can react with recall. This will happen first, protecting the unit and putting it back in your hand. Next we have Ari, our other champion. So Ari is really interesting because she has a whole lot of recall synergy built into her kit. Um, and then also, highly benefits from having a bunch of elusives next to her. So the way she works is if you put her on the far left, she'll attack and then recall the unit to the right of her and attack again in its place. And she'll do that infinitely um, as long as the units don't go anywhere. Like if they're recalled or something, then she'll stop the attack chain. But it's really interesting. I've never seen a mechanic quite like this. It actually fits her playstyle and her thematic a lot from League. So really exciting how they transitioned it into Legends or Terra. Next we have Conspirator. He's another turn 2 unit. Basically, like if we don't have Ari, we can Conspirator any of our 1-drops for value. Like Kennen get, comes back and gets another mark, Dancing Droplet comes back and draws, Otterpus comes back so you can replay it for Prank. So he's just a nice little like combo piece to uh, satisfy our 1-drop recallers. Next we have Quicken. Quicken is amazing. Recall a unit with 3 or less power. You can use this as protection, just like Recall or you can use this on your opponent's units. So if they summon like Lulu or Poppy and they don't have any spell mana to buff them with Sharp Sight, just put it back in the hand. Really, really cool, really, really annoying. This is a high value card because if you can hit a three or four cost unit, 
for the price of two, then you're going up on resources against your opponent. Next we have Retreat, just more recall stuff, but this one gets a benefit of for one more mana than the base card, you also get this if you use it during the turn. Uh, it stays in your hand until the end of turn. Uh, boom, you can summon a ally that costs three or less from your hand. That's pretty much everything except for Wayfinder. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, really good at bouncing units, putting them back on the board, leveling up both Ari and Kennen, of course. Very nice. Twin Disciplines, premium protection or running Ionia. Gotta run Twin Disciplines. Uh, God Willow Seedling, really good for combos, really good for recalling, summoning more units, whatever you're trying to prioritize. Shadow Assassin, really good for draw. Can be bounced, summoned, retreat, returned, summon a whole bunch. She's an elusive, so she's part of our attack chain. Uh, I should have noted that with Conspirator as well. Same thing. Concussive Palm, good stun. Uh, if you recall this guy, he turns back into Concussive Palm, so you can keep stunning opponent's units. Really annoying, really good. Double deny, because we're in Ionia. We can hit rallies and stuff with this. Really nice, just protect our uh, board, protect us from big removal, stuff like that. Homecoming, recall an ally to recall an enemy. Of course, recall synergy for us. And it's just, um, it's basically Quicken plus recall at the same time, <laughs> uh, but for one more mana. And you can also hit enemy landmarks with it, so that's kind of relevant. And then triple Kinku Wayfinder. So Wayfinder is really cool at establishing our attack chains. We can also get multiple cannons out and play it sort of like the Kennen Ezreal build. We get multiple Dancing Droplets, which is cool because that helps us with our Ari attacks. And then uh, we get more Otterpusses too, which attunes on Summon, gives us mana to work with for the turn. Super awesome. And of course, if we're running the Morn tier, then she uh, will also be part of our elusive attack chain with Ari. So quick side note, since we are playing Allegiance, it is kind of important to optimize our Ionia cards. Right now it says 9 Vandal, but that's because Kennen counts as both. So our only real Vandal card is Quicken, so if you want to maximize the Kinku Wayfinder, it probably is better to do Otterpus uh, for Mourned. Although 6 non-allegiance cards is also completely fine, so just wanted to add that in. And that about wraps it up for the deck profile. Now here's some live commentary games so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be trying my best to give context to why I'm playing certain cards, and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, so for the first game, we got a mirror match. However, this player has chosen to go into Sharima. Very interesting choice. Um, retreat, Kennen, Godwill, really good keeps. We'll just pitch Deny. Because we can do Kennen on attack 1, float turn 2, so we have retreat to protect them, and then Godwill on 3, another Kennen, show off the Kennen on the top. Always show the top deck card, it's good tilt factor. If the opponent sees it come from the top, they're like, of course they have Kennen. Why wouldn't they have Kennen on turn 1? So, I mean, hey, that's good value right there. <laughs> the clone technique, I get it, because they're mirror matching. Alright. Eye of the Storm into Eye of the Storm, completely fine. Uh, this benefits me more, though, because I have God Willow on three. If he doesn't have God Willow, then we're kind of in a winning position. Ooh, Ari, though. Ari kind of rough. Um, I can play Otterpus, because he basically gives me the mana for playing him, so completely fine doing that. We can just take the four as well. We called the cannon. Their thing. Then we shall seedling. So Kennen's gonna be our player around this game, very similar to how Kennen Ezreal plays, because we open multiple cannons and we open uh, seedling next to him. That's fine. Let us do attack. Yeah, let's just attack here. We have Quicken. Don't really need to do it. And mark this. He's marking my Otterpus. Yep. Three, four, five. So we see our five cannons. Oh. That sucks. The allegiance whiff. I was talking about that. I don't really want to take all of that, so we can block the two damage. Um. Sheesh. Doesn't really matter how we block because Ari's just going to hit with everything. Um. I could do Quicken, right? I have the mana for it. 
quick in, put it back in the hands. Lock here. Mark that. Sorry, there's a lot going on. Um, let's do this. Okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Alright, we're all chill, we're all chill. Uh, let's do this. Resummon our Kennen. And then we'll have Kennen on round start. Nice and leveled for us. Mark that. Nice proactive recalling. Yep. Very good, very good. Um, wow, that's also just pretty good. We can recall our real one, make an ephemeral. Pack with everything, that's a summon. It's a lot of annoyance. We don't really need our real cannon. We have one in hand already, too. Gives me another mark. Uh. Nice, I guess. Um. Sure, let's just do this. I don't think I'm going to need to do too much else with the turn. I could prank him. Sure. This is so silly. What that? Random Xenotype Researchers. Oh, that's an interesting inclusion. I'm not going to lie. I find that quite interesting. Uh, another Wayfinder. It will be done. That's another mark for me. Hunter approaches. Tuh. Okay. Uh, we'll just kill this off then. Zap zap. Oh, my poor Otterpus. Alright. Shadow Assassin, pretty nice. I don't know what's going on with the- wait, he probably hit Allegiance, just doesn't have one drops left. <laughs> good point. We just need our Ari for our elusive chain. What's going on here? I mean, I could Twin Disciplines that. There's nothing he can do. Even the one mana plus two damage is not enough, so we just went out. We also have another cannon coming out. This is Tempest style. All right, for game two we got Riven Pantheon, very strong deck. We got Kennen Ari, we got Wayfinder, we got Shadow Assassin. Um, yeah, I mean, good enough to keep. Maybe pitch Wayfinder. Not super important in this deck. Would rather see our other cards. Draw into Wayfinder. Maybe, maybe. Oh, never mind. Got it back anyways. Yep. They're just gonna zap that. Thank goodness there's no zero mana spells for this faded. So faded each time that there's a spell cast on them from uh, their ally, they gain 1-1. One, one. Pretty strong. They can ramp up out of control. Uh, 
You think he runs Elixir of Wrath or something? Why else would he attack here? Um, he might, he might. Do I need this cannon? Am I playing around cannon again? Could be. Yeah, I probably am. Um, we'll just take then. This also denies another turn from his Faded. Slowing down his Pantheon. Super high value. Uh, Dancing Droplet. Cannon. Dancing Droplet. Cannon. Let's see how we're doing this. Yeah, we'll recall the cannon. She doesn't die, right? I mean, she could. Depending on what he has. I don't think he's on that one mana spell. If he does, he does on the white flame. Okay, so he doesn't have one. I thought maybe Elixir of Wrath or something weird like that. Replay our cannon. Ah, okay. And then we'll zap this guy. There we go. We have Concussive for this or for Pantheon. It's not like they have one damage removal, so Ari's gonna be fine. I can start bouncing Droplet with her maybe. That's fine, I don't care about three damage. Go ahead. We find her. Autopus, nice. Another one. So we can double prank this. Let's see what we got. Transfusions, wow. And? We stand together. Give two allies one two this round. Let's make everything cost a bit more. Their hand really sucks. It's good for us, of course. Very good for us. Back here. Um... I mean, we could just swing with everything and do a retreat return of what this guy's trying to block, which is our cannon. Which is good for us because we want to bounce cannons too. Oh, never mind. We're doing this. Not the cannon. Interesting. Uh, we could probably just let that happen then. I don't really care all too much about this Wayfinder, like at all. He gets a Fury proc, like, doesn't matter. We have Concussive for him at any moment. Unless they have Bastion, which gives a Spell Shield. That's the only thing I'd be scared of. Spell Shield plus Overwhelm. Until then, I'm not really scared of him. So we can just full send it. Four units away. Otterpus. That's fine. Uh, Assassin. Deny is good. I guess we can just pass on that then. We float our mana. We have Concussive Palm for open attack. Block here. Concussive this. Or vice versa. Oh, he has Overwhelm though. I don't want to take any damage. So we'll do that. This was correct. Droplet. Oh, free attack. All right, go ahead. Use your free attack. I'll just uh. Oh. Hmm. Now nah, we deny these. You would get to attack even if he's stunned because the spells uh forcing it. Really interesting. Another concussive's good, so we'll do again. Ari. And droplet, and then uh, attack here. And we can reasonably attack with everything, right? As per usual, just be really annoying. Whirling death. Um, I mean that could just be another deny to be honest.
Ah, if I had this Twin Disciplines earlier, I could have got lethal. Poor Shane. Oh well. Chocolate. It's fine, doesn't matter. And Droplet. Yep. Another Ari. Yep. Oh, just don't get Spell Shield, please. Don't do it. Okay, no Spell Shield, we're chilling. Let's do this. Do concussive here. Retreat here. Should be good to go. He gets nothing accomplished, <laughs> essentially. Fail. Oh, he's gonna draw. Into nothing. So not even an answer. What's cool is we could recall this and just have another concussive and this guy's never allowed to attack. Or block, technically. Play Shadow Assassin for cheap. Draw another card. Wiccan's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I don't really have to do much though. Reweaver's fine, don't matter. And we should just win. Uh... Yeah. Do I play slow? I mean, I could. I don't really see a reason to. Let's just do the twin disciplines. Why do you fight? Yep. He has to be on like a second whirling death. Off the top. Nope. All right. Then we're just gonna get the swap in. We could have got leveled Ari if we really wanted to this turn. But I don't really see a reason to play it slow when we have lethal. Alright, and for the final game, we got Pantheon Rennington. Uh, we have Ari on attack 2, which is perfect. We have Seedling, which is really nice. I think we have to pitch everything, though. We really gotta find our 1-drops. Like, it doesn't matter what these are, we have to pitch them. If we see Ari. Yo, should we play the Otterpus Heavy Hand? Try to play around him this game, because I think pranking this deck sounds really funny. Just like we did last game. It's so annoying for the opponent. I think we do it. Uh, Kennen's so strong, though. I'll just do the Kennen. Zap it, let it hit, that's fine. Play Ari, attack. Try to get Ari leveled this game. That's gonna be the priority. Wiccan's very good. Not so much into his champions, but maybe his other units. That double hit. Gem. Okay. Oh, we got the Otter Pusses now. I think we just play those then. We can do all three. Another gem. That's yeah, fine. I could do Quicken, but they could be on Pale Cascade. Which will leave the Quicken. Three attack. Otter Puss. Otter Puss. Mark. Kill that. Next turn. I don't want to prank. Now? Let's see? Ah. That's not that great. I'll just make it 6 cost though. Prank again. Minus 1 power grant funnel. Minus 2 power. Hmm. 
Zero attack. Gift giver. Very nice. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Like that. That looks pretty good. <laughs> we just like turbo leveled this cannon. We only need one more Autopus. That's fine. I'll quicken self. Dude, this is what I was talking about with the Autopus juggling. It's so annoying for the opponent. Such a fun, like, build around. Not only can we quicken self for protection, we also have Concussive Bomb, which might actually just be better. And then leveled next turn on 5, naturally. Without Willow, without uh, Inku Wayfinder, just by summoning Otter Pusses. Very cool. He can't play this, which wouldn't be that great for him anyways. Three cards in him that we don't know. One's Pantheon. Um, I don't technically have to do anything until combat, so I guess we can just prank. We want to be on six mana in case I need to do Concussive and Quicken, so we can prank once. Put us down to six for the turn. Uh, grant that two cost, please. He was probably thinking about playing that, but now he can't because it's uh, five cost. Yep. To be expected. So we'll just concussive. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing with that zero attack gift giver. That ain't right. Concussive here. Vector Ari. Then we can quick an Otterpus. That gives us cannon level. Uh, as soon as we summon it next turn, which will be my first action. I mean, this could just be FF for them. And state's really bad. Ooh, homecoming. Homecoming gets us almost to Ari. We could have it this turn, actually. Not pre-combat, but um, post-combat. And then next attack turn will be the Ari attack chain. I have to develop elusives after this, though. Um, and I kind of want a homecoming that to be honest. That's off the top too, huh? I think homecoming's good here. We still get stunned. That's kind of lame. Oh, homecoming counts as two targets for Ari. That's broken. Didn't even realize. Kinda lame she still gets stunned. We would have had a really cool combo if he didn't top deck this uh shield vault. Patience is a virtue, but not too much. Is there really a reason to then? Yeah, I guess so. It denies the self-target. I am a huntress. I am Bastaya. Like, she's still vulnerable, but we have Twin Disciplines as protection. Next turn. Uh, don't want to replay the Pantheon, so we just swing. You know what I should have done? If I didn't care about this Autopus creating another prank, I could have recalled Tale of the Dragon to get another Concussive. However, he's a good attacker this turn, so there's some merit to keeping him here. Just prank infinitely. Just make his hand unplayable. I guess that's the goal. Make them FF. Another pant?
Huh? What's the point of that? Just for fun? Because I mean, you could just gem him if you wanted the. All right, never mind. Three mana gem, four mana guiding, five mana stand together, six mana mystic, and one more prank. All right. All's cool. Why not? Mm, he can guiding touch. Guiding touch would put him up to seven. So that's probably just recall then. Just a protector. We take six, which is fine. Don't really see them like rallying, right? So it's okay if we take the damage. Oof, I go down to four. A little scary. I think we just win though. Got the double level, and we're gonna get the full on attack chain. Alright, so here's what we do check this out. First, we open with a prank. Oh, we didn't see a new card, so it's probably a champion. Um, we'll just hit this. And we do here, 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 here. When disciplines aggressively. There we go. Now she's going to attack across the entire chain. Go hit, swap, hit, swap, hit, swap. Check this out. Minus six. Minus 12, 18, 24, 30. 30 damage. Let's go, Ari. So for some closing thoughts, I just really wanted to build a deck that fully plays around Ari in her leveled up win condition. Being able to put twin disciplines on her aggressively, so she's 5 attack, or no, she's like 6 attack, right? Because of her level. She goes up to 6 attack and hits like multiple times. You can OTK people, which means 1 turn kill. Even with that 20 HP, you get 4 or 5 units attacking on your board. Uh, Ari just keeps swapping, keeps hitting. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> Definitely a good character to play around, a good champion here. Uh, at least in this deck. Again, I really like Mourned over Otterpus if you value the turbo version of Ari because that will level her a little bit faster since it self recalls uh, and it also helps the Kinku Wayfinder attack chain. But Otterpus absolutely put in work the past two games, so highly recommend trying uh, both. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!